Okay, hello everyone. Welcome back to uh, Introduction to Stable Homotopy Theory. And today we're going to start a new important topic, the one of bus field localizations, which I plan to use to occupy the next uh, three or four lectures. And uh, after that, we should still have enough time to do some of the manifold theory I promised you. Hopefully both theorems I plan to do, but we'll see. Um, okay. So remember, our goal is to study the infinity category of spectra. And uh, the idea that Bausfield hit upon was to study simpler subcategories that you can obtain somehow by localizing the objects. So the intuition, and in fact, it's secretly a special case of this approach, you can consider Z one over P modules inside Z modules, that is abelian groups. Or you can consider P local, uh, sorry, P complete. And actually you should put a derived P complete, but we'll discuss this later. Z modules inside Z modules. Uh, and this is the kind of, of subcategories we're going to, to study. And they will be equipped with a left adjoint that's going to invert P or P completing. And it turns out that in spectra, you have uh, a lot more possible choices than these, but um, well, we won't be able to study them thoroughly, but at least I'll give you the basic setup and how the, the things work. Um, hopefully one non-arithmetic example. Um, so let me put some definitions. So uh, recall that if E is a spectrum, we define for every spectrum X, the E homology of X to be the homotopy groups of E tensor X. This was by analogy. Analogy oof, with the fact that uh, for every space Y, this is the homotopy groups of H A tensor sigma infinity plus of Y which I think I left as an exercise at some point in the past. But the idea is to take a cellular filtration of Y and see that the right-hand side computes cellular um, homology using the fact that tensor product commutes with cofibers, et cetera, et cetera. Um, okay, that's the definition. And so um, put a definition here, sorry. I need to sit down with I have a very small desk here. Um, definition here, a map F or X to Y of spectra is an E equivalence if uh, it is an equivalence in E homology or equivalently if uh, F, uh, sorry, uh, let me write it as E tensor F from E tensor X to E tensor Y is an equivalence. That's because remember in spectra, a map is an equivalence if and only if it's an equivalence on homotopy groups. And the homotopy groups of E tensor X and E tensor Y are exactly the E homology uh, of X and Y respectively. And um, let me put it a spectrum X in spectra is E acyclic if. Um, X to zero is an equivalence or equivalently X tensor 
the E tensor X is zero. That is, its E homology is trivial. And let me put as a remark, since E tensor blank is exact, that is, it preserves fibers or cofiber sequences. I mean, they're the same in spectra as we have seen. Um, F is um, E equivalence, if and only if um, the cofiber of F, or equivalently the fiber of F, is E acyclic. And actually, the previous definition doesn't use stability, but this remark does. We are using that a map of spectra is an equivalence if and only if its cofiber is trivial or equivalently it's fiber. That comes from the long exact sequence in homotopy groups. Let me write from the less in homotopy groups for E tensor F. Okay, this is perhaps a little bit of a barrage of definitions, but hopefully they are nothing too scary. I mean, saying that a map is an E equivalence if and only if it's an equivalence in E homology, and E acyclic is, well, in the case of uh, E equals HZ, sigma infinity plus of Y is, e, is HZ acyclic if and only if Y is acyclic in the classical sense, it having trivial reduced homology. Sorry, trivia. Sigma infinity of, of Z, say, is a cyclic if and only. Yeah. Um, anyway, this is a minor generalization of something you should have seen perhaps one year ago. And finally, here comes the main definition. So a spectrum X is E local if for every E equivalence F say from Y to Z map the mapping spectrum F X which goes from the mapping spectrum of uh, Z to X to the mapping spectrum of Y X is an equivalence. I could put also the mapping space. There is no difference, but it will be convenient to use the mapping spectrum here um, because you can get, uh, obviously, E equivalences are closed under suspensions for obvious reasons in the definition. And, uh, and then you can shift the, the various E equivalences to recover the condition of mapping spectrum from the condition of mapping spaces. So if you want, let me put it as an exercise. Um, uh, X is, uh, sorry, E local, if and only if the condition of mapping spaces is an equivalence. And we will write write the subcategory of E local spectra as sp E inside sp. And that's our main object of study for the, uh, for the present moment. So let me give you a couple of seconds to write down these and then I'll give you a few examples. So today and perhaps Monday will be dedicated mainly to prove an abstract theorem about this category. And then the rest will be dedicated to covering uh, two important examples and uh, giving without proofs a third. So are there questions so far? 
Yes, maybe uh, to the notation above you wrote uh, sigma plus f. Can you recall what you mean by sigma plus? Oh, sorry. That's, uh, yeah. Um, sorry. Yeah. Uh, where, where did I use it? Uh, uh, somewhere in the remark. Oh yeah, sigma plus, sorry. Uh, that's just my shorthand for sigma infinity of y plus. Since, since, since sigma infinity needs a pointed space, if I have a generic space, the, the standard way to do it is you add a disjoint base point. Okay, yes, thank you. Sorry, this is, um, it is sort of standard notation, but some people prefer not to use it. It's a matter of taste. Um, I am quite used to use it, although I, I admit I tried to avoid using it in the last uh, lectures, so I forgot here in this example. Okay, other questions? No. Perfect, so let me give you a couple of examples. So first, as an example, so let P from the sphere to the sphere, the multiplication by P naught. In fact, P in my head is a prime number, but it's irrelevant here. And if you want, it's defined by taking the diagonal into the sum of P copies of S and then the full map, like in every semi-additive category, in every category with direct sums, you can define such a map by diagonal including into P copies of your object and then summing them up. And you know, on, on pi star, this is literally multiplication by P on the homotopy groups, as you can verify because, well, because this definition goes through homotopy groups since pi star commutes with direct sums. Okay, and let S mod P be its cofiber. This is an object, it's usually called a mod P Moore spectrum. And it has the property that, well, now I introduced this notation for, I mean, of course, the homology with respect to HZ. Is Z mod P star is zero and zero otherwise. This is something you can, I don't know, prove using the long exact sequence of the cofiber sequence and the homology of the sphere spectrum. Use the fact that pi star so HZ star of S is just pi star of HZ, since S is the unit and that's Z of star is zero and zero otherwise. And then from the long exact sequence and the fact that the multiplication by P is multiplication by P on homotopy groups, you get this property. And so a spectrum X is S mod P acyclic if uh, P from pi star of X, pi star of X is an iso. And that's because from the long exact sequence, of this cofiber sequence here that's obtained by taking the defining cofiber sequence of S mod P and tensoring it with X, we get uh, that there is an exact sequence. Uh, plus one, let's say. No, sorry, X tensor S mod P. I start X multiplication by P multiplication by uh. 
And you can see that this guy, zero if P is Isaac. Or if you want, oh, I forgot something important. Or if you want X tensor S mod P is zero, if and only if P from X to X is an equivalence. Since remember a map is an equivalence if and only if its cofiber is zero. And okay, that's definitely a notion of PS cyclic. And uh, we will see, we will see that being S mod P local is a completeness condition on pi star of X. Uh, I don't want to do details here because, of course, we haven't the tools yet. But as an exercise, um, if you've ever seen this, um, well, no, that's not me. I, I cannot even state the exercise. I, but let me say that I e. The conditions is going to be that x is going to be equivalent to the limit of x mod p to the n over n, where both the limit and the mod are going to be derived. So, so it's a completeness condition. And you can actually read it in the homotopy groups, but I, I think I don't want to write down exactly right now what this means. So these spectra are called p-completed, are one of the two examples we will cover later. To give a simpler example, you can define S of P inverse, which is just the co-limit of the multiplication by P map. So that pi star of S of P inverse is literally pi star of S P inverse. And that's the reason why uh, no one ever puts parentheses there because it doesn't change anything. And um, sorry, X is S P inverse local if and only if pi star of X is locally P power torsion. Sorry, no, uh, uh, cyclic, not local. by which I mean every element is p-power torsion, but uh, the order of the torsion might be infinite. So if you want, x is the union over n of the p to the n torsion. These brackets p to the n is, is the symbol. I don't know if you've seen it in algebra classes. You usually use to denote it the p to the n torsion of an abelian group. So that's not the And, uh, and X is S P inverse local, if and only if P from X to X is an equivalence. So these are the two examples of localizations we will cover. Uh, I haven't given you complete proofs of these statements, but I will after we set up the general theory. This is just to give you a bit of the flavor. And these are sort of the, the classical localizations, the localizations that you can sort of read in homotopy groups. The cool fact about spectra is that there are other localizations that behave like them, but they're less arithmetical. They come more from geometry. In fact, the third examples I want to discuss is localization as topological key theory, which behaves a lot like this uh, as the inverse local thing. Uh, but uh, it's, of course, uh, well, what happens is that it's an instance of what's so-called periodicity phenomena. Essentially, we are inverting a map not in degree zero. 
and so the homotopy groups become periodic. And that's the beginning of a very, very important story that unfortunately I won't have time to develop. It would be a whole other class only discussing that. That's called chromatic homotopy theory. Uh, but I want at least to give you the first, uh, the first intuition of how this phenomenon arise. Okay. okay. Um, questions about these examples? No? Okay. So the first theorem I want to discuss is that e-localizations in general exist. So I defined your subcategory, but a priori it could be the zero subcategory, right? I mean, I haven't proven that these things are interesting. So the first theorem that's going to take a while to prove um, is that, so let E be a spectrum, then the inclusion uh, of E local spectra into spectra has uh, left a joint LE from spectra to E local spectra um, called E localization or localization at E sometimes. So concretely, this means uh, i.e. for every x spectrum, there exists a spectrum, an e local spectrum L e of x and a map x from L e of x, such that for every e local spectrum y, maps from L e of x into y to maps x into y is an equivalence. It is every map from x to y factors through L e of x in a canonical way. This theorem has a bit of a history. And, uh, it was originally stated by Adams in his blue book, uh, which is actually a transcript of lecture notes of a class he gave in Chicago. Uh, unfortunately, his proof was wrong for set theoretical issues. Uh, and it was fixed by Bausfield, who gave a correct proof in a couple of papers. Uh, the most important one is the main reference I'm following for this lecture called the localization of spectra with respect to homology. Um, uh, unfortunately, as I hinted, this proof requires a little bit of faffing around with set theory um, to that there is a modern way of thinking about this. I'm trying to use a low tech way as much as possible here, uh, but I will need to use uncountable cardinals uh, and uh, the smallness conditions, which, so now the first step will be to introduce these smallness conditions, show that they're well behaved, prove a fundamental smallness condition for the category of eacyclic spectra and, uh, and deduce this theorem from that. But I wanted at least to state the theorem before starting into the set theory, because otherwise you, you could have been wondering if I lost my mind, uh, starting to talk about ordinals and cardinals and, and, and all the rest. Uh, so are there questions about this theorem? No. Okay, so... Okay, maybe I'm going a bit fast. Uh, so, okay, from now on, this Greek kappa is going to be a regular cardinal.
often uncountable, um, but I'll, I will say it explicitly when I will need it to be uncountable. I hope every one of you has done at least some basic set theory and know what a regular cardinal is, but in case, uh, well, a regular cardinal is a cardinal that's in some sense big enough so that you cannot write it as the union of less than kappa sets with less than kappa elements. There are some cardinals that are not regular. It takes a while to give an example and I have not much interest to do it. Uh, the, there is also a reason why we are restricted to regular cardinals and I will give it in a moment, but it's not really that important unless you're really, really into these technicalities. I'm just mentioning it because, well, because I want to do the theory properly, but okay. So, definition a simplicial set uh, A is, or maybe you want, want to call it A, let's say I is kappa small if it has less than kappa non-degenerate synthesis. And in fact, if kappa is uncountable, I could say less than kappa simplices at all, since every simplex has only countably many possible degenerate versions. But that's not important. So ideally, the idea is that you can build I using pushouts and uh, kappa small unions. So unions are less than kappa elements. Because you can imagine take the cellular filtration of my simplicial set and at every step I'm adding the non-degenerate simplices which are less than kappa using a push out and go on and on. That's roughly the intuition. We already saw these for finite simplicial sets, which are the case of omega small or alpha zero small simplicial sets. And in fact, now we're going to say, so a definition that should recall you, a simplicial set S is kappa filtered if uh, for every I kappa small and for every F from I to S uh, map of simplicial sets, there exists a point of S lying above I. So we have seen this definition for when kappa is omega one, when kappa, sorry, omega is omega, that is the countable cardinal, uh, kappa filtered is the same as filtered. In fact, if you look at the references I gave for that, for that section, all the, ref the, the reference does the version with a parameter kappa already. The whole theory can be done for a parameter kappa. Uh, I didn't do that because I didn't want to clutter it, but now we're going to need this slightly more refined version. If you can think of it, uh, if S is the nerve of a poset, S is kappa filtered, if and only if for every subset of P of cardinality less than kappa, there exists a, a, an upper bound. That is an element of P that's greater of your subset. And you can write a similar condition when it's the nerve of a category, it's slightly more annoying, uh, but not essentially different. But the case of a poset is actually what you should think about. And so we are actually going to use essentially this other example. So if C is an infinity category, 
with all kappa small co-limits, by which I mean co-limits of diagrams indexed by kappa small simplicial sets, then C is kappa filtered. And that's because you can get this extension just by taking the co-limit. Okay, this is a minor generalization of a stuff we already seen, but it's fairly abstract. So please interrupt me if uh, it's not working. Okay. Good. So now let me introduce the reason why I care about this. So let sp kappa be the subcategorial spectra generated by all possible spheres and the kappa small co-limits. By which I mean the smallest subcategory of spectra that's closed under kappa small co-limits and contains the suspensions of spheres. My first, the first result I will prove, the first smallness result I'll prove is that spur kappa has only a set of equivalence classes. Remember, spectra has is a big category, as a proper class of, of equivalence classes. If only, I don't know, I'll remember claiming spectra are already a proper class. So first we're going to prove that spur kappa has only a set, and then we will also prove that uh, every spectrum is in spur kappa for some kappa. That's going to be quite explicit, actually. Um, so this gives us some set theoretic control in what we're doing. So, okay. Proof. Proof. So we're going to write per kappa as the union for ordinals less than kappa of some category C alpha, such that C alpha is a set, such that C alpha is uh, is a small category. And we're going to construct C alpha in uh, uh, by transfinite induction. This is probably not a surprise if you've taken a set theory class. This is how you prove this kind of constructions. And that's actually fairly easy. And this will prove that spur kappa is, is a set as a set of equivalence classes. And all these categories will be full subcategories, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. So uh, oh and when I say small I mean essentially small by which I mean that it has a set of equivalence classes. It might have a class of objects if you set up the theory badly. I'm not going to distinguish between equivalent objects uh, for these purposes. Um, I hope at least that this small amount of sloppiness is, is okay. Uh, okay, that's easy. We start with C0. That's just uh, what, we, what we wanted to have. And then if we have C alpha, C alpha plus one is the full subcategory of sp such that, uh, sorry, spend 
actually, sorry, I should go to a new line. This is too long. Spend by all co-limits of functors f from uh, how to call it i to c alpha i kappa small and lambda limit ordinal of c lambda is the union for alpha less than lambda of c alpha. Okay, so that's a definition by transfinite recursion. And um, C alpha plus one clearly contains C alpha because you can just take I the point. That is okay. And uh, C alpha plus one is kappa small because, sorry, is, is small, it's a set because there are only a set of kappa small simplicial sets because you only have a set of ways you can glue kappa simplices to each other. And well, this is small, this is a set and the, the collection of functors from two small categories is still a set. And they take the co-limit, so you get a set. So the goal is to, well, to prove that the kappa is equal to C kappa. And well, his containment is clear since uh, C kappa, no, sorry, this, what do I, no, this containment is clear since uh, if C alpha is in spur kappa, then C alpha plus one is in spur kappa. Since the kappa is closed under kappa's molecular limits and C alpha plus one is obtained by uh, kappa small co-limits of elements in C alpha. So kappa is closed under kappa small co-limits. And the other inclusion is, well, we have that C kappa contains C0, which is this guy. So it's enough to show C kappa is closed under kappa small co limits. Since per kappa was the smallest subcategory containing C0 and closed under kappa small co limits. And okay, so we have, suppose we have F from I to C kappa. A functor from a kappa small diagram. Uh, well, the goal, the, the claim is F factors through C alpha for some alpha. And why is it the case? Uh, well, it is the case because I has less than kappa vertices. So we know that for every I in I, there exists alpha I less than kappa such that F I is in C alpha I. That's because C kappa is the union of C alpha for all the alphas strictly less than, than kappa. Moreover, cardinality of, of I, I mean, the, of the vertices of I is less than kappa. So the super alpha, that is the supremum over all I in I of alpha I is still less than kappa because kappa is a regular cardinal. So you cannot find a, a sequence of ordinals strictly less than kappa that reach to kappa. Here we are using the regular cardinal hypothesis. Uh, and so F factors through C alpha, but then 
colim of f is in c alpha plus one, which is in c kappa again. Okay. Sorry, there's going to be a lot of set theory today and transfer its recursion. That's the, just the nature of the theorem I'm, I'm proving. Uh, but. Yeah. Okay. Then, oh, I forgot to say something important. Well, I'm going to need to use it now, so I'm going to say it now. Uh, are there questions about this? No? Okay, I'm going to use the following theorem, which is in fact a theorem I already stated for when kappa is omega, and the reference I gave it proved it for arbitrary kappa, but I've rewritten in the notes anyway, that if uh, I is kappa filtered, the functor colin from functors from i to space into space uh, commutes with kappa small limits. So remember, we saw that filtered colimits commute with finite limits, and this is just the kappa version of that. Um, I do feel that there should be an, an easy proof of this fact. I've messed around, around with it a little bit um, for, uh, for an afternoon and I couldn't quite come up with a complete proof, uh, uh, but hopefully sooner or later the stars will align and I'll add in the notes a complete proof. Until then, there is a reference with a slightly less pleasant proof. Uh, also, I'm stating it for spaces, but in fact, it's true with a lot of generality. Part of the reason why I want to find a simpler proof is that I would really find, like to find the, the, the correct property of the category for which this is true, uh, which I haven't found yet. It's true for all stable categories. It's true for all topoi. It's true for um, all compactly generated categories. It's true in a very wide ranging of settings. So, okay. Sorry for not stating this earlier. I forgot when I introduced kappa filter things. But I am going to need it because I need the following lemma. If x is kappa small, then maps out of x from spectra to spaces commutes with kappa filtered. Um, co-limits. And the proof is easy, actually, using this theorem. Um, it's, it's true uh, for x is some suspension of the sphere, because it commits with all filter co-limits. Now, filtered is a less restrictive condition than kappa filtered. So if it commits with all filter colimits in particular, it commits with all kappa filter colimits. And uh, so it's enough to show that the subcategory of X such that maps the X blank commutes with kappa filtered co-limits is closed under kappa small co-limits. Since then it contains also the kappa. Um, and, mm, but, if I don't know f from i to sp is a functor with i kappa small and f i 
Yeah, let me put the star has the property star for every i. We have that maps in spectra um, from the colimit in i of f i blank is just a limit spectra f i. And the thesis follows from this. From the above theorem. Because I small limit commute with uh, kappa, sorry, I limits commute with kappa, small, kappa filter co limits in spaces. In fact, I think, okay, is the proof of this theorem true? Uh, clear? It's also true. I'm fairly confident it is true. Um, but as an exercise, which will be in the exercise sheet as a guided exercise, because the way I'm going to state it right now is probably going to be a bit hard. Uh, this is an internal leaf. I.e. if map spur x blank commutes with kappa filtered Co-limits, then x is kappa small. And the reason why I'm saying it's a bit hard is that when kappa is uncountable, this is actually not hard. It's a fairly formal categorical machinery uh, thing. You can play with it a little bit. I'm going to give a hint, but it's 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 doable, uh, and it's always true in general. I mean, you can do these definitions for a general. Um, reasonable infinity category, and this will be true. But when kappa is omega, this is actually specific to spectra, and it requires an additional argument. What's easy to prove is that x is a retract of, an, of a finite spectrum, and then you need to give an additional argument to prove that finite spectra are closed on the retract, which is, um, which is not an obvious statement, which requires some, some work. But I'll put it as a guided exercise in the exercise sheet, so you can. Oh, and that's the reason why kappa small spectra are often also called kappa compact, which is actually what this this property is typically called, or kappa of or kappa finitely generated or kappa smallly generated. I'm not sure. Uh, this is more category theory terminology, which that's a bit outside of my usual language. Okay, we good so far? Okay, because now I'm going to put this proposition. I'm going to say, so let kappa be uncountable. Okay, here I'm going to use uncountable uh, and X a spectrum such that the cardinality of pi star of X is less than kappa. No, oh, I'm sorry, that's a spectrum. The cardinality of the homotopy is less than kappa if and only if X is kappa small. So this kappa is fairly explicit. This is not true for finite spectra. It's not true that the spectrum is finite if and only if its homotopy groups are finite. And in fact, as an example, the sphere spectrum is definitely finite, but its pi naught is not finite. If pi naught is z, as we have seen. Um, but yeah, uh, for uncountable, it's enough. But in particular, um, for every x in spectra, there exists a kappa such that x is in kappa. Because you can just take some kappa that's bigger than the cardinality of the homotopy groups. Which is uh, the statement I wanted to look at. But actually, this is also going to be convenient. 
Oh, by the way, if you read the older literature, like the Bousfield paper that I mentioned before, kappa smooth is usually said as X as a CW structure with at most kappa cells. Uh, in case you read the older literature and you're wondering what this condition is. Uh, I'm not very interested in, in, in working out exactly why these things are equivalent, but they are. Um, okay. So, okay, let's do this. Proof, let's do first this direction. And I need, oh, in order for this proof, I need a theorem by SA, which actually I don't remember if we mentioned it last semester or not. And I, can you hear me? Can you hear me? Sorry, I think my connection slipped out a little bit. Yeah? I can hear you. Okay, good. Um, so, Yes, here my sum, um, which is saying that uh, that phi i of S n is finite if i is different from n or two n minus one, I believe. Yeah. In any case, it's always countable. But in particular, we're going to use that phi i of the sphere spectrum is finite for i different than zero. And in particular, it's always countable. Uh, we didn't prove it last semester. It's a slightly hard theorem. Um, it's a computation that you do using the homology of Elmer McLean spaces. Um, but, um, but okay, I'm going to take it as an input. We only need that pi star of the sphere spectrum is countable actually uh, for, for what we're going to do. But I don't know a proof of that fact that doesn't use this stronger theorem anyway. So, okay, so, okay, so sorry, proof of the proposition. So, how do we prove the proposition? So, let's prove first this direction. And uh, we prove, so by the theorem, by Sarah. Uh, so let me actually denote with A, the collection of all spectra with cardinality. Um, okay. This is in A for every N in Z, where A is this set, this category of spectra that you want to identify with spec kappa. Wow. So it's enough to prove A is closed under the kappa small colimits. We need to show that A contains per kappa. That's the implication we're doing. And we've shown that it contains all the spheres, and it's enough to show that it is closed under kappa small colimits. And okay, uh, I'm going to prove that it's closed under under. We're going to prove if to prove it is closed under co-fibers and kappa small co-products. And then you can generate all kappa small co-limits by this kind of operations. Well, actually I should say push outs, but in, in spectra, if you have uh, co-products and, and co-fibers, then you also have push outs. Because, uh, well, that's in every additive category you have this push out is the same thing as this cofiber. Okay. 
And okay, well, Kappa's Monco products are clear because if I have this direct sum and I take its homotopy groups, well, that's just the, home, the direct sum of the homotopy groups. And so if cardinality of I is less than Kappa, and cardinality of pi star xi is less than kappa, uh, then the cardinality of this direct sum um, xi is less than kappa. And I mean, this is just um, they're using that the direct sum is the subset of the product such that finitely many of them are non zero. And then you just, I don't know, you go by induction in the length on the number of those that are non zero, for example. It's a standard set theory exercise. Um, it wouldn't be true for the product, by the way, uh, but it is true for the direct sum. So, you know, I don't know. This, let me write it, is the union. Uh, of the subgroup, those elements supported on a given finite subset of the subgroups, on a given finite subset. And then you need to use that finite subsets of I have cardinality. Less. I mean, the collection of all finite subsets of I has cardinality less than kappa, which is not true for all fine for all subsets of I, which is where why it's false for the product. Anyway, this is easy. And now suppose X and Y are in A and we have a map. And we take Z, the cofiber of F. And we want to show that Z is in A. So by the long exact sequence on pi star, we have, so pi star plus one, no, uh, pi star of Y goes to pi star of Z, sorry, pi star of X goes to pi star minus one of x, goes to pi star minus one of y. So we have an extension uh, co-kernel of pi star of f, pi star of z, kernel of pi star minus one of f. So that's what it means to have a long exact sequence. And well, this has cardinality less than kappa because it's a subgroup of pi star minus one of x. And this has cardinality less than kappa because it's a subgroup of, sorry, not a subgroup, it's a quotient of pi star of y. And uh, well, again, I'll let to you as an exercise in group theory to prove that if two extreme groups in an extension have cardinality less than kappa, then the center has also cardinality less than kappa. And that's because you can take a set theoretic section and, and write the center as the set theoretic product of the two elements, not as a group, of course, but you don't care. It's enough. Or if you want, you can see a, this element as the union or row points of these of the fibers that are subgroups here and seven subsets here so there are various ways of doing it so this shows that the kappa is contained in a
And that's actually true also for, uh, for countable kappa, for kappa equal omega. Um, it's the other inclusion that fails for countable kappa. No, sorry, never mind. I said something false. And this is not true for kappa equal omega, of course, because the sphere is not in, in, in doesn't have a. It's the, it's, sorry, it's the other inclusion that's also true for kappa equals omega. Uh, my mistake. Anyway, um, let's prove the other. Okay. So how does this work? So we have X now such that pi star of X has cardinality less than kappa and we want to build it. Um, as um, uh, using kappa small colimits. And here we're going to use uncountable because we're going to build it with cofibers with uh, kappa small coproducts and a sequential colimit. And sequential colimits are not omega small, but they are a kappa small for uncountable kappa, of course. Uh, since, uh, well, it's a countable pool set, so necessarily kappa small for uncountable kappa. Okay. Um, so where are we? Yeah. So the idea is to start with, with uh, x0 is 0, x1, x2, etc., x such that uh, uh, xi is in kappa for every i, and the co-limit of xi is x. We're going to, to do that. And so let fi from xi to x. And the way we are enforcing this is going to be the following. So let fi be the fiber of fi. So we have xi goes to x, goes to xi plus one, goes to x, and it's the identity. And we have fi, fi plus one, and here there is an induced map, uh, which I'm going to call hi, and there's fi plus one. And in fact, instead, we're, what we're going to, we're going to construct xi such that hi is zero on pi star. For every i. So this implies that the colimit of fi, which is just the fiber of the map from the colimit of xi to x is zero. Since its homotopy groups are trivial. Note that Xi is not going to be non-homotopic, very far from it, uh, but it is going to be trivial on homotopy groups. So this is a counterexample, if you want, to the naive um, conjecture uh, that if a map is zero on homotopy groups, then it is non-homotopic. This is called, uh, this is known as freight generating hypothesis, and it's an open problem whether if, if the spectra are finite, but our spectra will be very far from finite. Uh, and this will give a counterexample. By the way, pay attention to this proof because we're going to do a very similar proof next time um, to construct the localization. Pay attention to this construction of this, this thing. So we're constructing xi by hypothesis, uh, by induction. Okay, so x0 is zero. Okay, well, we have that. Uh, that's, not, uh, that's not hard to construct. And it comes equipped with a map to, to x by construction. 
So suppose we have Xi. Then we can write Fi goes to Xi goes to X like this. And remember, uh, the homotopy groups and note that the cardinality of the homotopy groups of Fi is less than kappa because it's true for Xi and true for X. And arguing as before, you can show that it's true for Fi. So now we can take following thing. So we take for every homotopy class in the homotopy groups of Fi, you can take a sphere on the appropriate degree and you map it to Fi. That's definitely something we can do. And note that this is kappa small. because, well, it's just a couple of small co-product of spheres. And this map is onto on pi star. Because, uh, well, because we have done the most stupid thing that produces a map that's onto on pi star. We just added a cell for every element on pi star and set it like that. And so let's take our the cofiber of these to be Fi plus one. Which I mean I know I introduced it F I plus one for a different object, but bear with me here. Excuse me. Um, yes. Maybe I, I, I missed it, but when you write alpha in pi star, then you mean um, for every n. Pi yeah, n. yeah, sorry, that's just a very for every n in z and for every alpha in pi n of fi. Sorry, that's just a shorter okay. way of saying it. And, and n so, is um, what I'm calling the degree of alpha. And the uh, ah, okay, yeah, and ah, okay, and uh, cardinality of pi star is this then stage wise or the whole union? Uh, since kappa is uncountable, it actually makes no difference in the condition. Uh, but uh, you can choose whichever you prefer. Uh, okay. Since I'm just taking a union of countable elements or, or a direct sum of countable groups, and then it's less than kappa either way. It, it actually, I mean, maybe what I should say is cardinality of pi n of fi is less than kappa for every n. Also, that's not an equivalent way of saying it, since everything is countable. So that's why I'm being a bit sloppy because uh, take the interpretation you prefer, it, it, it makes a difference. Okay, thanks. I missed the uncountable. <laughs> oh, no, sorry. As I said, this hypothesis is very important. Uh, that's, that's, uh, that's, that's, that's essential. Otherwise, the theorem is false. Uh, as, I, as I told you, there is a counterexample. Okay. But anyway, we have this map, and this map is onto on pi star, as I said, and so this map is zero on pi star by the long exact sequence. And now let me take xi plus one to be the push out. Yeah. And note that since this is the push out, you can also write it down as the, sorry, maybe without rewriting it as the cofiber of this diagonal map. So that's also a cofiber sequence. Uh, since it's a push out diagram. If you want, uh, it's just a paste in lemma for push out squares. In particular, so this is kappa small. Remember, this was kappa small by hypothesis. So this is also kappa small as we wanted. Uh, 
And now we are almost done. Now, this composition, maybe I should use a different color, sorry. Maybe I should have done this diagram bigger. This composition here, uh, from the direct sum of all these spheres to X, is null homotopic. It's canonically null homotopic because it's factoring like this. And we have a null homotopic of the map from Fi to X, since that was the fiber. So we have a canonical factorization through the cofiber here. And playing with the universal properties, actually, this is also a cofiber sequence. Oh, sorry, no, I'm using the other color. Cofiber sequence, as we wanted. And so, whew, actually, we have everything we wanted. <laughs> so we have an a map here from xi plus one to x such that the fiber receives a map that's a zero homotopy and xi plus one is kappa small. And so that concludes the proof. That's, I hope the argument was clear. Uh, if not to try to play with it, it's actually not that hard, but since we're going to reuse it a couple of times, um, it's probably good if you understood it. Okay. Okay. So I think I have the time only for one last result. But is this clear so far? So the idea is you want to approximate X more and more with, with steps that are closer, although it's hard to understand in which sense they're closer. But the point is that at every point I'm killing the fiber of the map from XI to X in some sense, in the sense that the, the, this map on homotopy groups is zero. And uh, since I'm doing it countably many, oh, and sorry, I didn't say this, this colimit here is also kappa small. Uh, since uh, kappa is uncountable. That's very, very important. Um, And so, so at, every, at every element, we add enough cells killing this fiber, but we might have introduced other cells by adding these cells. And so we need to kill them at the next step and at the next step and the next step. And, and we do it countably many times and we won. Okay, so this is okay. So now let's do the final result, I think. Oh, yeah, I don't want to run through it. I'll say it's a very short result, but as a proposition, we will need to show that, okay, let X be a spectrum, then the map from the limits for Y in kappa small spectra with a map to X of Y X is an equivalence. Sorry, no limit, call limit, of course. Uh, in particular, every spectrum is a kappa filtered call limit of kappa small spectra. And here I am using that per kappa is small. Otherwise, this co-limit would make no sense. So that's why I insisted in proving it earlier. Yes. 
the following. And again, this is a proof we're going to recycle uh, next, uh, next time. Uh, we recall that pi star commutes with a filter colimits. So in, in particular, we do kappa filter colimits for, for kappa, of course, since kappa filtered is stronger than filtered. And so it's enough to prove colin of pi star y to pi star x is an isomorphism. Um, oh, by the way, sorry, let me put as a remark, this category sp kappa over x has all kappa small co-limits by definition, so it is kappa filter. Sorry, I should have said it earlier. Yeah, because per kappa is closed under kappa small co-limits and kappa small co-limits in this slice category are computed in per kappa. Okay, is this clear? Okay, so uh, okay, let's do this this proof. This proof now it's easy because okay, we need to prove it's a map of it's proof about a billion groups now. So we need to prove it's onto and it's injective. So oh, it's clearly onto. It's onto because if we have alpha in pi n of x, this comes from alpha for kappa over x from the fundamental class in pi n of sigma n s. So this is rather tautological. Uh, but injectivity is also uh, quite clear. So suppose now we have f from y to x with y kappa compact and alpha in pi n of y going to zero in uh, pi n of x. And we need to show that this goes to zero to some kappa small spectrum uh, receiving a map from y. So let's write it like this. So we have this map, we have f, we have x, and this map is zero. We have a null homotopy. We can choose a null homotopy of this map. Well, but then we can just take the cofiber cough alpha and that's still kappa small this is and then y comma alpha goes to zero in y prime f prime x. And so it is zero in the co-limit. So, well, that's it. This is a relatively formal theorem actually with what we've proven. Um, yeah, it is an actually formal theorem. Um, okay. 
excuse me. Yes. Maybe I missed something, but uh, this proposition then um, states that the cat uh, the infinity category of spectra is locally kappa presentable for every well kappa. yeah kappa accessible actually but yeah when you add the collimit uh, when you add the existence of collimits uh, which i did earlier you get uh, kappa presentability yes that's exactly what this uh, in fact if you take kappa equals omega this tells you that spectra are compactly generated and that's actually the language that the modern language in which these these results are are normally introduced. Uh, I just didn't want to introduce all this kind of categorical terminology, but yeah, this is telling you that spectra is in kappa of the kappa for every kappa, in particular for kappa equals omega. And in homotopy theory literature, people tend to drop the locally from locally presentable, which just makes them. It's just I don't know why. I mean, I know why they put it because they usually called kappa compact object kappa presentable in in, in category theory, um, but yeah, okay, it's not the language. I mean, I can read it, but I I cannot speak it to this language, so to speak. I'm used to a different convention. Uh, but okay, thank you. That's okay. I'm trying to keep the. I mean, in fact, actually, I can tell you if you know these things. I, I, I guess I, I don't have a lot of time to do new stuff, and I might as well mention it. The theorem I'm aiming towards is a special case of the fact that a pullback along accessible functors is an accessible category, uh, uh, which uh, I didn't want to do in this generality. But that's the, the theorem I'm going to need for proving the localization result. In fact, I'm going to state the special case. And I think that's going to be enough for today. So let me say the following proposition, which is the, my, the main set theoretical issue, where, the main set theoretical result we're going to need. So let E be a spectrum. Then every E acyclic spectrum is a Oh, sorry, I need to choose a kappa. Let E be a spectrum and kappa such that cardinality of pi star of E is less than kappa. Uh, then every acyclic, E acyclic spectrum, yeah, is a kappa filtered Co-limit of kappa small E a cyclic spectra. And in 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 categorical language, since you mentioned it, the kernel of the E tensor map from spectra to spectra is kappa accessible. That's the the result that I'm aiming for. And of course, this kernel is just a, a pullback of along an accessible functor and et cetera, et cetera. And and, that's, and in fact, I don't particularly care about kappa. I just care that some kappa exists. Uh, excuse me, uh, which definition of the cardinality of pi star do you take now? Oh, let's say uncountable kappa. Um, I, I I really don't want to deal with the since I, I can always since I'm going to increase kappa more and more. I really don't want to deal with the special case of a countable kappa, uh, since it's it's really not germane to what we are doing. I think you need uncountable kappa actually for this proposition. That, uh, uh, I I actually think I want the the cardinality of the union of pi n of e uh, for all for all n, I think that's what I'm actually going to use. But again, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's since I can always increase kappa if I want to, it's not going to be a, a big deal. OK, thanks. OK, and that's the, I'm not going to prove it now because I, we don't have time. So I think I'm going to end five minutes earlier uh, for today.
In fact, if you know some, some of this category theory, I'm essentially proving a special case of the adjoint functor theorem. Uh, in, in, the, in this main theorem, I'm, I'm proving. In fact, modern language would just be, okay, you just kernel of accessible, accessible, then you can apply the adjoint functor theorem and then you win and, and do this whole theory in like one paragraph. Uh, but I'm trying to to be explicit here without introducing too much categorical machinery. And that's, okay, and that's, yeah. So next time I'm going to prove this proposition and then use it to very simply prove the theorem I stated and maybe do a couple more examples if I have time or if not, it's going to be, the examples will, be, will start the time after. Questions about what's been done today? Sorry for the amount of set theory. Unfortunately, if you want the, the theorem to be true, you need to be careful about these things. As I said, the first theory, the first proof ignored these facts and took a, just a collimit over a, a, a big category and uh, well, just, that just doesn't exist in general. Uh, such is life, sometimes set theory happens. The examples are going to be more fun, I promise you. Uh, but, but the theorem is actually an important theorem that's used several times, so I wanted to prove it properly. Okay, if there are no more questions, I'll stop the recording.